Hello, we are here today to present our proposal on the relaunch of Target in Canada. This presentation was created by Anjaina Rojas, Disha Patel, Eduardo Morales, and myself, Serge Metellus. About five years ago, Target decided to expand into the Canadian market. This venture proved unsuccessful. Target lost more than $2 billion and eventually had to shut down all of its stores in Canada. Many factors contributed to the failure of Target Canada, including inconvenient locations and a failed marketing strategy. Target rushed into its launch without an properly analyzing the differences between the American and Canadian markets. The first issue from the initial launch of Target Canada that we'd like to address is that of the rush launch. Um, Target bought a number of already built department stores and attempted to launch way too quickly into a market that may have already been aware of the brand, but was also a very different market from the one that Target America is used to. So if Target is to relaunch in Canada, we suggest that the company do so in a series of phases to ensure success and avoid large losses like the first time. Um, if we can take a closer look at the population density map on the right side of the slide, you can see that the most densely populated areas in the country are near the border shared between Canada and the United States. Our suggestion is that Target begin by launching in areas close to the border where Canadians are already familiar with their brand. This will also help the company save money in the marketing department as they have already they already have a set reputation established in those areas. Phase two would consist of further expansion, which should occur if and only if Target Canada is, is successful with phase one. So now that Deesha has spoken to us about the uh, different phases of expansion that we think Target should have uh, implemented when uh, starting out in Canada or that they should implement if they ever want to open their stores back in Canada, um, I'm going to talk about the importance of location. Because picking the right neighborhood is the key to success in for any business. Uh, the location is so essential because it kind of tells you where the, like what kind of customers are going to come in, if they're going to spend money, if they're only looking around, what kind of culture they are. So it's very important to actually uh, go above and beyond and try to determine what zone is a good location by uh, looking at the demographics, for example, average income, culture, and education. And it's also a good idea to put to put the stores in a location where uh, it is convenient for uh, customers to travel to. For example, we, we think more uh, Target stores should be placed in malls and plazas where a lot, there's a lot of traffic and a lot of people going there and it's always going to be busy so it's more likely that there's going to be more, more customers. But there's one thing to note, though, that uh, Harvard Business School backs, backs up with, and they say this quote, many companies don't understand that what works in one location may not work somewhere else. And this is definitely true, because, for example, take uh, Starbucks and McDonald's. Starbucks is expensive. If you put it in a, in a cheap neighborhood, uh, probably no one's going to go there. But if you put McDonald's in a cheap neighborhood, like it's gonna be packed. And that's something to take into consideration. That's why um, determining the average income of the population around this, the location is very important. As I have mentioned before, uh, analyzing the, the residents of the location is very important. You can analyze by, dem by demographics by including the average income, culture, education. But I wanna emphasize on the culture because it is very uh, important and since there are so many uh, foreign born um, people in Canada and to be exact it's about one out of five according to statistics of Canada uh, we believe that Target should uh, implement more multicultural items into their catalog because Depending on the zone, maybe they go to Chinatown or maybe they go to a more Hispanic uh, 
area, people want different things and they want to target those people that live near it because people who are far won't travel all the way there to buy maybe sushi, you know? And uh, it is very important to understand the clientele's cultures and traditions so that uh, Target is uh, able to better bring more items from all around the world. So studying the culture is very, very important. As seen from the two initial figures, it's obvious that the average American income is much higher than the average Canadian income. This means that Americans have more spending power as well. If we take a look at the table on the following slide, we will see that middle-aged Americans, or the prime working bracket, spend more on average than middle-aged Canadians. The table also shows that young adults and those in the early stages of their career in Canada spend 50% more than their, than their American counterparts. Analyzing such income and spending patterns will first help target in determining their target market for specific products. For example, it's obvious that younger people in Canada spend more on discretionary products, so Target should focus on developing promotional strategies for such products that are directed towards that younger demographic. Studying such patterns can also help target Canada in determining pricing. When comparing cost of products in both countries, it's evident that products sold in Target Canada cost Canadians relatively more than what they would have cost in the United States. Canadians did not shop at Target Canada initially because they did not find the prices of products to be on par with the low prices of Target USA. Now, although it may not be easy to drastically lower prices of items due to factors outside of the company's control, such as taxes, Target should focus on manipulating promotional techniques so prices are perceived as being lower. So having sales or um, offering a certain percentage off of items would definitely work in their favor. So every company is built upon uh, revenue and costs. Uh, costs are usually no, no major threat to a company, but uh, if the company does not deal with these costs properly, it could turn into something really bad and probably a closure. And research shows that being nice to customers and giving them back brings more customers because people like treat, being treated like humans. And this is something that many companies such as Starbucks and Amazon uh, do and Uber because they want to focus on the relationship with the customer. And if they complain about something, it's always the company's fault and the customers are never wrong. So that's some, something to point out there and usually it, it's a good way to manage uh, business. And well, as I mentioned, one of uh, the competitors of, Am of, of Target is Amazon and it is something that uh, something Amazon does re really well is do promotions. They always have a promotion and if you go to any store and you like barcode the the item, you will probably find it cheaper on Amazon. That's something they're great at. And it's something Target should do as well. They should have promotions. They should have maybe a Target uh, card and have promotions, uh, discounts for for customers and it, it brings more customers in and at the end of the day what what drives the business is customers um, it is important to know that also that uh, having over staff is very bad but being understaffed is just as bad because if you're overstaffed you're paying more money for people but if you're understaffed, people are going to stop coming because they're going to have to wait in line forever to simply buy a soda. So it, we believe it's a good idea to implement more uh, machines like CVS, Amazon. For example, Amazon uh, has over 45,000 robots working in the ware warehouses. As the image shows on the right, that's the Amazon uh, robot. They replace a human and they're much cheaper and not only that, but they're faster and efficient. So as a group, we believe that 
Target should implement these in their warehouses as well as uh, uh, caching machines. Not completely replace humans because some people like the interaction with a human, but it is a good idea to avoid costs. Now let's take a look at a few challenges that Target may face when relaunching in Canada. The first and most obvious one is that there's a high risk factor in attempting to relaunch. During the first attempt at global expansion starting in Canada, Target invested $4.4 billion and suffered a loss of about $2 billion. To reinvest in a market that they have once suffered a losses in is a huge financial risk. Another challenge that Target will face is that of trying to recreate their image. When Target Canada shut down, their popularity as a failed brand increased. To change that reputation in the eyes of the consumer from an, un from an unsuccessful brand to a successful one will be one thing that Target may struggle with. But a revamp of reputation is also extremely necessary, and it's the only way that they'll be able to regain customers. The last challenge we will address is the competition that Target Canada will face from already well-established department stores in the country. This includes companies like Walmart, Loblaws, and Costco. In his article, Off Target, How a U.S. Retail Giant Misread the Canadian Market, Sorensen discusses how within the Canadian market, it is hard for two competing companies to coexist. He mentions for every shiny new J. Crew that's popped up in the local shopping mall, there's been a Jacob store that's gone out of business. So basically what he's saying is that the only way companies are gaining customer loyalty is by stealing them from other companies. Companies like Walmart and Costco are, are already competing by attempting to offer the lowest prices to gain customers. And so now Target will also be faced with the challenge of maintaining reasonable prices to keep their business, while also offering the lowest and best price to gain customers from its competitors. In order for Target to continue to grow, the company needs to expand into new markets. Implementing a successful marketing strategy will allow for Target to grow tremendously in profits and in influence. A step in the right direction which is globalization, the new era for all companies. It's a window of opportunity for Target to grow when its home-based market is stagnant. Globalization will allow it to go into these new markets and be able to make profits that it never was able to do before. Target will be able to leverage and build its existing assets, its global purchasing relationships, its global supply chains, unique products, unique formats, and its well-known brand. This graph shows the correlation between globalization and growth. Basically, companies that operate in global markets tend to grow more and have more profits than those that don't. The United States and Canada have completely different markets. The evidence suggests that Canada has more foreign-born individuals and that its population is concentrated around the USA-Canada border. It also suggests that Canadians have less disposable income and tend to drive less. Now, what do these findings mean? Well, all these factors make for a different consumer market than the one in the United States. In order for Target to successfully relaunch in Canada, the company needs to understand these differences and create an appropriate marketing strategy. While a new marketing strategy and study into the previous failure may yield favorable results in a relaunch, there are no guarantees that Target can compete in this market. It is important to understand the local economy, the needs of the Canadian people, and to not underestimate the competition. One of Target's main challenges will come from maintaining competitive prices. If Target fails a second time, it will not only guarantee a huge loss of money, but also could potentially harm Target's reputation worldwide, leading to a potential drop in stock prices. By implementing simple solutions, however, such as better store locations, convenience, and interesting and diverse product selection, success will be easier to, ach to achieve. If Target complies with local regulations, cuts down expansion costs and implements these solutions, the company will definitely be in a better position to succeed than the first time it launched in Canada. The potential gains definitely outweigh the risks and make the relaunch a sound business venture and investment opportunity.